Dear founder of Midjourney, why did you create it? What is the long-term vision of it? And why Midjourney images are so damn good? I couldn't find answers to these questions online. There is no marketing, no interviews. It produces incredible images. And yet, nobody is interviewing CEO. Nobody is talking what is the future of it. So I did what any normal person would do. I wrote to the founder. Which is one reason why we actually are relatively quiet on the marketing side is because... But before we dive in into what I discovered, we need to understand the context first. Why my journey is a big deal in the first place and what makes it so unique? I think at the end of this video, you will leave quite surprised. Let's cover basics. Did you know that Midjourney is the largest Discord server with 9 million users? Previously, Genshin Impact Server was the king of Discord, around 1 million users. Midjourney is also one of the largest GPU users in the world, utilizing more than 10,000 GPUs. That's just the beginning. Suppose you are asking yourself, how less than a year old research lab got access to this many GPUs so quickly. In that case, first we need to talk who is behind Minter. Tech field, they kind of know that whatever David works on, it's going to be cool, right? Meet David Holtz, a well-respected second-time founder in Silicon Valley. There's a huge advantage of just like being a known factor. So when I needed to find a cloud vendor to give me 10,000 GPUs, I could just email the head of the cloud vendor and say, hey, this is David doing a thing. And they go, this is David, he's doing a thing. And they could, they could give me all the resources. And it was kind of, I didn't need to have venture funding to do that because people effectively knew who I was. He is also the mastermind behind Leap Motion. Before Windows support a touch screen, Leap Motion was doing mid air gesture control in 3D. And I think that's the same company which was quite heavily criticized for not really considering that people want the whole day to do this while working. You get the drill, I, I don't need to explain to you, okay? But it's still quite impressive though. Very physical things I can do, like, you know. <laughs> Systems were simply not designed at that time for this level human machine interaction. And yeah, Le Leap Motion was simply too early. Consequently, Leap Motions was acquired by Ultra Leap in 2019. While I was naively waiting for David to reply, I came across only one recent interview with him. Behind a paywall, $12 later, let me tell you, his goals with Midjourney is far beyond than creating just a new image generation tool. On Midjourney's website, it says, Midjourney is an independent research lab exploring new mediums of thought and expanding the imaginative powers of human species. What does it even mean? One of my goals at Midjourney is to build new human infrastructure. And I think about like the world's going to need a lot of new things and we need infrastructure on which to build new things. And so I kind of think a lot about building like new pillars of infrastructure. So I needed my themes and my, my pillars were reflection, imagination and coordination. You have to like reflect about who you are, what you want. You have to imagine what could be and you have to coordinate to get there. It turned out that Discord provides this unique social layer to collective creativity and community aspect of interacting with a bot. Fun fact, the real reason why Midjourney is on Discord, drum rolls, it's because Midjourney team is fully remote. And Midjourney was quite agile and performed its first user testing inside Discord with exactly the same bot that team was using. And what we discovered was game changer. When I did user testing, because it was kind of unbelievable. It was like, if you want like a, let a person discover the product by themselves, we would do this and, and we'd be like, okay, here's a machine. It'll, it'll let you do a picture of anything you want, anything you can imagine. What do you want? And they just go, dog. <laughs> and, 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 it'll, and it'll show them like a photo of a dog and they go, okay. And it's like, well, no, come on, because you're there first. Like, what do you want? Come on, a little bit more than that. They go, big dog. And then it's like, and, a, and you keep pushing, they go, big, fluffy dog. And, it's so, and at the end of it, they're so uninterested. It's like, this isn't interesting. Why would I care about this? But then you throw these people into the same environment all of a sudden with complete strangers. They go, dog. And someone else goes, space dog. And space dog with lasers. Space dog with lasers and angel wings. And all of a sudden, this person's like, oh, my God. Yeah. And they like, they've been put into this imaginative environment and it starts to kind of change their beliefs about themselves and what they can do. And, and all of a sudden, like it's creating an imaginative environment that actually makes people more imaginative yes. too. And you might be wondering, how does it actually do that? Let's talk about things which I think you didn't know, but you should know about Midjourney. 
First, Midjourney didn't train their first model. They didn't train their second model. In fact, they put a lot of open source stuff together and just started tinkering and making custom stuff with it. They didn't need to train anything to understand generative AI art space. And some open source things included OpenAI's Clip, which even though didn't generate images, but helped with the language stuff. Midjourney only trade their version 4, which took them 9 months too, and I'm excited about this one. A lot of first model training and foundation for diffusion models is thanks to this woman named Catherine Krauson. She was independent researcher in the middle of nowhere, just training stuff. She never worked for anybody else, and you can't find much information about her. However, it seems like as of recently, she started working for Stability AI, the guys and girls behind Stable Diffusion. Watch out for a video on Stable Diffusion on this channel. And we are getting to the very important stuff here. Right now, if you make an image with Midjourney, your image might be produced in eight different regions in the world. Midjourney will use a lot of GPUs in Korea or Netherlands while it is a nighttime. So basically they are raising the darkness of a night to keep GPU usage balanced. And you will understand very soon why there is no much media coverage on Midjourney, there is no marketing, no interviews, and let me explain you why. When Midjourney got on everyone's radar in 2022, they have been the first consumer-driven AI mod. I would argue that changed with ChatGPT entering the scene in November 2022. However, both are bound by the physics of cloud computing and GPUs. And to scale their access not to millions, but billions of people, they will need to dramatically rethink the fundamentals. To give you an idea how significant this is, if we wanted to scale their users and usage by the factor of 10 today, they would run out of all the data centers and machines in the world. It's more of a question of like, if we need a thousand times compute in the cloud, there's nothing, there's there's almost like having a thousand times more GPUs in the cloud is going to be an incredible physical expenditure of energy. Not, just, not electricity, but it's like literally just like making that many machines and making that many data centers. And so if we actually do need that much more compute, I think the, the opportunity is probably in saying what maybe isn't a GPU. And to scale, David predicts this two scenarios. I don't know what it will look like. There's kind of two worlds. One is that it just takes us seven years to scale a thousand X. And for the next seven years, we're just, the market is computationally limited, which would be really interesting. Uh, and then the other argument is like sometime in that period was like huge new forms, like, like significant energy put into custom chips, which could maybe drive it down another factor of 10. And then all of a sudden it happens in like one year. Um, so I don't know what will happen there. I'm aware of like one really cool chip effort, which like maybe in a few years you would like burn the, the, the neural network into the chip directly. And then like, it's like there aren't, there aren't even any memory anymore. It's like the, the transistors themselves hold the weights. So like electricity comes in and images come out. There's like not even necessarily even a clock. And like, you could just kind of make these, that would be really cool. And so for the next few years, I think these markets are gonna be like limited computationally more than anything, which is one reason why we actually are relatively quiet on the marketing side is because we, we don't have to have a product for everybody. So did David answer me? No. But in the meantime, I interviewed ChatGPT on ethics of AI art, and I think some of the stuff might really surprise you. Another perspective is that AI algorithms themselves should be considered the creators of AI art, and therefore